Okay, well then how much gas do I have when I drove 150 miles? So the amount of gas that you're talking about here is talking about the Y value. That's how much gas will be left in your tank. I don't know yet. But I know that that's going to be equal to the 12 gallons that I started out with. Take away 1 32nd of a gallon. And now you're going to be talking about you drove a certain amount of miles. How many miles did they drive? 150. So I shove in the 150. And I type this into my calculator and I see how much gallons of gas I'll have left over. Now when you do this, I'm going to tell you in your calculator, even though it doesn't show it on the board, your calculator has a specific way they like to have things typed in. In your calculator, you should put this stuff that's a fraction in a parentheses. Whenever you see fractions, use parentheses in your calculator. And your answer will be in gallons of gas when you're finished. So 12 minus parentheses 1 divided by 32 parentheses times 150. Seven point thirty-one. Thank you. Seven point thirty-one gallons to the nearest two decimal places. So really when you think about this, if it's a twelve gallon tank, you still haven't even used half of your tank yet. Because remember, that'd be six, and you still have over that. So you can go over 300 miles in your car, which is kind of a nice deal. <clears throat> Notice how this one says, how much gas will I have? So gas was the Y stuff. Miles were the X stuff. In part E, it says, how far can you travel before there's only one gallon left? Now, the one gallon left is talking about the very end. When you're finished you're talking about one gallon. So one gallon left is saying to you that in the end, you have one gallon. Don't forget that you're starting out with 12 gallons of gas. And the rest of the equation was one minus, or, or sorry, minus one thirty second x. So now I have to solve this equation. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract off 12 from both sides. So let's subtract off 12 from both sides. If I subtract off 12 from both sides, I end up with negative 11. And then the 12 is gone over here because I'm minus 12 here, I'm minus 12 there. And that's equal to negative 1 over 32 x. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, I didn't really get to use a calculator a lot, so fractions would tend to mess me up sometimes. So I like to get rid of them if I can. And one of the strategies for getting rid of fractions is whatever you see on the bottom, multiply both sides of the equation by, and you can get rid of it. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 32. So I multiply this side by 32, and I multiply this side by 32. The reason that you're multiplying by 32 is multiplying by 32 and dividing by 32, those cancel out. You don't have to worry about that anymore. So on the right-hand side, I'm going to have negative 1x because the 32 here and the 32 here get rid of each other. So this 32 and this 32 cancel each other out. So now I need to know what 32 times 11 is. Yes, that means you might have to do a little bit of work. Like hit a keystroke on your calculator. How much? 352. So don't forget about the negative sign. Negative 352. And of course that means that if I divide both sides by negative 1, then that means that x equals 352. What was I looking for? Uh, how many miles? 
miles. Thank you very much. How many miles? This is about miles. When I have one gallon of gas left in my tank, which is probably when I should for sure fill up my tank, just to be safe, I've driven 352 miles. <clears throat> Some review questions here that might help a little bit. We're going to find the slope of each equation. So remembering that we talked about earlier, that the slope is whatever precedes the x immediately. I see a negative.